The Watchmen movie and graphic novel that it's based off doesn't really have a main character or protagonist, since it's more or less an ensemble. But if I had to pick one, it would definitely be Rorschach. The most mysterious out of the bunch. He's the only one who actually bothers with truly concealing his identity with that iconic mask of his. The HBO show that just recently aired had to have this cool aesthetic involved in their production even though Rorschach's character had long since been dead. Our introduction to this complex character makes him seem similar to a Batman type vigilante, an intelligent and proficient detective working outside of the law. But he isn't as smooth and charismatic as Gotham's masked hero. He's clearly not a privileged billionaire from a wealthy family. If anyone is spending their nights going out looking to solve crime, they likely aren't the most mentally stable. You want me to heat those up for you? We learn Rorschach is no exception from the brief flashback scenes in this contained story. Halfway through the comics, he's finally trapped and cornered by the police. No, 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 no! He's been avoiding arrest for years after what the government called costume adventuring was outlawed. In the comic's sixth issue, a prison psychiatrist sits down with Rorschach to try and figure him out. His identity was blown. They took his mask and called him by his birth name, Walter Joseph Kovacs, a name he didn't respond well to. In his eyes, he was Rorschach and nothing else. Dr. Malcolm Long, the man analyzing him, noticed how dead and empty his facial expressions were. He didn't even seem to blink. Walter's stares alone made the doctor feel uncomfortable. Malcolm Long was interested in finding out how a man could have turned out so alienated. With or without the mask, no one seemed to like him. While looking through his files and through their sessions, we find out exactly why he's like this. His childhood was pretty rough. Watchmen is based in the New York area, including Walter's childhood backstory. He was born in 1940. I should mention that Watchmen takes place in 1985 in a slightly alternate universe than our own. It may be a DC comic, but it's fairly removed from the more known franchises. There's no Gotham or Metropolis here, folks. Little Walter's mother was Sylvia Kovacs, and he didn't know his father. The only thing he knew about him was that his name was Charlie. He left Sylvia a couple months before she gave birth. They weren't married or anything, and it didn't seem like much of a relationship. His mother didn't even know Charlie's last name. Sylvia had a tough time getting by. She was selling her body to pay off her debt and bills, which led her to getting arrested for prostitution while Walter was just a baby. Overall, she was a horrible mother physically and mentally abusive to her son, calling him ugly and even beating him. Walter walked in on um, one of her clients, I guess would be the word, thinking someone was hurting his mom. The man pushed Walter out of the way and stormed out of the apartment. Sylvia, losing out on the money, took her anger out on Walter. The abuse didn't end at home for 10-year-old Walter. When making a trip to the grocery store, he got approached by two older bullies who attacked him and made fun of him for what his mom did for a living. They threatened to pull his pants down and examine if he got diseases, really messed up stuff. Walter completely lost it, took one of the bully's cigarettes and pressed it into his eyes, then jumped onto the next asshole and bit him on the face. The adults walking by pulled him off calling him a mad dog. One of the bullies became partially blind from the burn. They all thought it was an unprovoked attack because Walter wouldn't explain that he was the one getting attacked. He probably gave the authorities the same quiet and blank stare that made his prison psychiatrist so uncomfortable. Child Protective Services took him out of his mother's care after investigating their home and environment. A good move for the both of them. He went to a home for problem children in New Jersey where he excelled in all aspects, except for socializing. Around the age of 16, they realized there was no reason to keep him around in a place like this, so he was free to return to a normal life. This same year, he was informed of his mother's brutal murder. Walter's only response was good. Sounds really harsh, but this was the same woman who told her 10-year-old son that she wished she had aborted him. Her pimp ended up forcing Drano Clino fluid down her throat after some altercation or disagreement. She never once tried to contact or visit her son after he was taken away. Walter told the staff of the problem home that a nightmare about her and that man together he walked in on upset him physically. It didn't seem like he continued his schooling after being let out of the home. He instead decided to take up full employment as a manual laborer in the garment industry. He describes it by saying, job bearable but unpleasant, had to handle female clothing. He talks in this weird pattern sometimes, very robotic and straight to the point. After a few years of working here, he got his hands on a special order dress. Dr. Manhattan had recently turned into a god amongst men on earth, and with his powers came new technological advancements. A special fabric that had viscous fluids sensitive to heat and pressure was one of them. The woman who ordered it, Kitty Genovese, thought it looked ugly and didn't want it. Walter thought it was beautiful. He enjoyed the white and black moving shapes without any gray colors. 
says a lot about him as a person. Everything was black or white to him, no middle ground, so he kept the fabric for himself. Kay Genovese was soon raped, tortured, and killed just outside of her apartment. This is actually a real and shocking story. In 1964, the 28-year-old woman was attacked, and while screaming for help to her neighbors, they all did nothing. Many heard or even saw the tragic murder, but took way too long for any action. If you guys have ever heard of the Genovese effect or bystander effect, it's named after what happened here. This changed Walter, it made him hate humanity and believe everyone to be awful people. He made a mask out of the dress. He said he turned it into a face that he could bear to look at in the mirror. The news about the horrible attack changed him, but he was still Walter Kovacs. He says he was Kovacs pretending to be Rorschach, a younger, more naive person than he is now at 45 years old. He began going out at night as a costume adventurer, going after criminals in the underworld. But he says he was too soft at the start. He left them all alive. During these early years, he teamed up with another hero named Night Owl. He had resources and knowledge that Walter didn't have. He had money and the know-how to make useful inventions that Rorschach would utilize, like that grappling hook he flings around with. They made a big enough name for themselves that they would be invited to join a group to fight crime together, the Crime Busters. A little corny and not the most original name, but the man who proposed this group was an OG hero who went by Captain Metropolis, an older man from a different time. We honestly never get confirmation if this group officially ever worked together. It's not like Dr. Manhattan needed the help. He was more interested with the young and beautiful Lori, aka Silk Spectre. The comedian completely shit on the idea, saying there's threats of nukes going off. Running around in costumes isn't gonna help. Rorschach believed a group this big would be too wildly and just a publicity stunt. Night Owl was up for it, saying he had previous success working with Rorschach. Ozymandias was mostly quiet and then consoled the defeated Captain Metropolis. Rorschach grew respect for the comedian after this meeting, saw everyone else as quitters. Nine years went by of doing the same routine, working the garment job in the day, playing hero at night. His true transformation into Rorschach happened in 1975. An unemployed man, desperate for some cash, kidnapped a six-year-old girl, thinking she came from a rich family because of her last name. Rorschach spoke with the family, promising them the return of their daughter, but he realized that this was just a middle-class family. Days were going by without any word from the kidnapper who wanted ransom money. Rorschach hit up some underworld bars and began forcing out some information the way he knew how. He wasn't the biggest man, only standing at 5 foot 6 inches and weighing 140 pounds, but he did train to peak physical condition and his boxing days while in school made him a great hand-to-hand -hand combat fighter. Plus being a little crazy helps. He sent 14 people to the hospital before getting some information. The 15th person gave him an address of where to find the kidnapper and little girl. But the house was empty, just a couple of dogs fighting over a bone in the yard. After some searching inside the house, Rorschach realized he wouldn't be able to keep his promise to the girl's parents. Her clothes were inside of a furnace, and meat cleavers were used to cut up her body, before feeding the remains to the dogs. The cleaver was his weapon of choice to put the dogs to sleep while they were wrestling with the girl's leg bone. As he split one of the heads open, he closed his eyes, and when he opened them, put the identity of Walter Kovacs behind him, only Rorschach remained. He wouldn't be soft on criminals ever again. He waited for the kidnapper, and when he came home from a night of drinking, threw the corpses of his dogs onto him through a window. He handcuffed him to that same furnace and set the house on fire. Rorschach stood outside for an hour, watching the place burn down, making sure he never got out. His outlook on life grew darker. He dismissed any thoughts of a god being out there, or any meaning behind life. He felt reborn after this incident, feeling free to design his own future in a morally blank world. He quit his job at the garment manufacturer, never having a paying day job ever again. He wouldn't even work with a night owl anymore, deciding it was best to work on his own. The comedian thinks this kidnapping incident made him nuts, but good thing he didn't say it to his face, he was the only one of them that he admired. People were beginning to mistrust and then hate the vigilantes, especially since Rorschach was now killing criminals without a fair trial in court. People really voiced their hatred for the crime busters when a police strike took place in 1977. All they had were costumed heroes to defend them, which made the people only want the police back on the streets more. These protests led the American government to outlaw vigilantism. Rorschach was the only one to not comply with this new law. Dr. Manhattan and the comedian were hired by the government, but the rest were tired. As a display of his defiance, he killed a serial rapist and left his body outside of a police station with a note saying, never, the R being capitalized. He was now a wanted man. 
Once he got arrested in 1985 during the events of the Watchmen comic and movie, he would escape and continue his mission of doing what he believed to be right. Reuniting with Night Owl for one last mission put them up against their biggest threat, Adrian Veidt, who used to go by Ozymandias, the smartest man alive in one of the other crime busters in Watchmen. He was behind all the villainy scheming during the story, but he turned out to be more of an anti-hero than anything. The US was moments away from a nuclear war from Russia, which would pretty much lead to the end of the world. Adrian made the world come together under the threat of an alien-like psychic giant squid from another dimension. One of the more realistic comic book stories ended with one of the craziest outcomes. Super Detective Rorschach figured this all out and confronted Adrian in Antarctica, where he was staying. He planned on informing the world that the squid was just a hoax, even after Russia started playing nice with America. Rorschach believed evil should be punished without compromise. In that last issue, Dr. Manhattan doesn't allow him to return to America and share the truth of the matter. Jackie Earl Haley perfectly portrayed Rorschach's final moments in the story. This casting decision was perfect. The Watchmen movie was spot on with a lot of casting actually. The comedian, Dr. Manhattan, Night Owl, all perfect. Rorschach's will would live on through his journal that he wrote in during the events of his investigations. In case he wouldn't return, he documented his findings about the squid hoax and left the journal with a newspaper company. Whether or not they published it was left a cliffhanger in the final moments. Love this character, but what a fitting end for him. He was so relentless that even in death, he would find a way to bring justice for the millions of lives Adrian's plan took. Hope you guys enjoyed this Watchmen video. I've been planning a Minutemen video for a while, so these aren't stopping anytime soon. Thanks for watching, I'll see y'all later.